performance for Regina Nathan from Dublin, the Orchestra of Welsh National Opera, conducted by Guido Aimoni Marsan. That beautiful aria from La Vallée by Catalani was featured in the French movie Diva. It was one of Toscanini's favourite operas. He named his daughter Vallée after it. I must first of all tell you that I'm absolutely bowled over by this girl. I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, th this young girl comes in and does one difficult thing after the other. She starts off with the Et Incarnato says, which must be the Beecher's Brook of all soprano arias, <laughs> does it so as though it. falling off a log. She has the most superb br breathing, I think, of anybody in the competition so far. She hardly seems to move, and out comes this outpouring of sound right to the bitter end of every phrase. It's, 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 it's very it's, hard to define a quality, isn't it? But I, I think she has a sort of quality of rapture and innocence That's about right. her. It's, it's, it's quite extraordinary. Well, Virginia, this is a sentimental visit for you, as indeed it is for me. I give you a hard time, though. You did? Regards, yeah, you uh, were. You were terribly strict. Sure. I mean, it's had an awful effect on my life up to sure. date. <laughs> my musical life, I can I'm still sure hear you. <laughs> you know, I hope it was sound advice. Do you remember the problems of opening brilliant. your mouth and... Um, being more relaxed. It went very, very well. Though. Once you got it opened, you couldn't stop me. It was an embryonic voice, obviously, capable of great development, and she had been very well schooled, very well grounded indeed, in Ballymahan, the combat of mercy there. Even then, I agreed with the two good sisters there, Sister Agnes and Sister Mora, that here was a voice of some potential. We're talking now of a young girl of 17 and 18 year old, and in private conversation with Regina, which surprised me at the time and impressed me. She said that she wanted to be a singer. The first time that I noticed there was a special quality in Regina's voice was when she took the part of Yanetta in the school production of The Gondoliers. She had a song to sing in the finale of the first act. It involved a lot of high notes. At least I considered them high for a girl of her years. She was just about 15 at the time. She sang through that piece with the utmost ease. And Dooley was and Schubert. Dooley, that's right. Schubert. There was a part in that, you know, I got the giggles. You didn't know that one. She had these tiny little tails at the back of her. <laughs> Every time I looked at her, I got the fit of giggles, so much so that she got really angry with me one night and told me to stop laughing at her. Regina, you had this unhappy knack of getting the giggles at the wrong time. <laughs> I still have it. My memory of Regina is that she was a very, um, no, I won't say lazy, I mean, I mean that, but I'd say laid back sort of student. She, she never seemed to have anything finished when I'd look for it. You remember the 16 bar melodies? Well, invariably Regina would say, um, well, I'm, I'm just in the middle of the B section when it should all be finished. And the same with the harmony exercise, I'd say, I'll take up the exercise now. And just, well, I, I, I've only two bars done. <laughs> but you'd get them. Oh, eventually, yes, eventually <laughs> I'd get them, but it could be a week later when it would come. One that really stands out in my memory is the Yigadetta in The Gondoliers. You said that too, yes, right, did didn't you? Yes, yeah. I remember she was just hopeless at the romantic bits. I felt so stupid trying to show her how to, how to be romantic. I'm sure she's learned since, I'd say she has, but anyway, that's, that's the way at that time. Joe, so this is where we used to meet. Well, you cross, uh, cross each other's paths. <laughs> you maintain that I still don't remember the first time we met, but I do. 
You don't. <laughs> when was this? It was a choir practice. Uh, you, you remember that now because I told you. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a choir practice. And who introduced us? Father Watson. Yeah. That was it. You were really, beginning, you were the beginning really, of the end. But you were really green then, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that isn't fair. Yeah, it's only, uh, it's only a young fella. Yeah. That's it, that's how it goes. But you told me a lovely story years after. Do you remember what it was? Oh. You said you saw me walking across the bridge with my books and my gabardine coat. No, oh, with your purple hat on you. And you saw you were going to marry me. I said that to myself. Girl, you told me that. I was a bit naive then, too. <laughs> <laughs> I had been in Maynooth a year already and I had to repeat a subject. And uh, Joe had just come in as a first chair. And uh, like it was part and parcel that uh, music students took part in the, the choral society. And we were so small, such a small group of people. That we were I was the only male. I was the only male in the... Um... No, no you weren't. No, he likes to think he was, but he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I could be asked at what time did I recognize her as having the ability to make it in the international scene. Vocally, I realized that very early on. But as you know, there are many other things involved in music besides having a most beautiful voice. That's a gift from God, and Regina has that. And she has many other gratuitous blessings as well. Oh, I hadn't thought of doing a singing career. I mean, I, I left school and the nuns put me in for a scholarship to the College of Music and I got that. And um, I was just going once a week up to Dublin. I mean, th some years I stayed in Maynooth and other years I didn't, but each, no matter which, I was going for once a week lesson to, to Nancy Calthorpe in um, the College of Music, but I, I haven't thought of a career, no. No, definitely not. It was just, um, I was doing my college, like everybody, I was doing a college degree in music, French, classical civilization. And, and I went on to do my dip, and it just gave me that space that I needed to develop a little bit of the confidence now. As you know, singing is a tremendous discipline. It involves the whole person. It involves the mind, it involves the intellect, it involves uh, body language, if you like, it involves gestures, the eyes, the impression that you make, the presence that you have on the stage. And all these I tried to help and assist her when she was here as a student in Maynooth. There's always been people there to encourage. Um, and they did, I couldn't, uh, there were times I would stop and feel I can't do it, and they would be the people who say, you better do it, you know. <laughs> they'd, Father Watson was, was very good with me with that, and he'd always say, you know, you just, he's a, he has a tremendous uh, philosophy that, you know, everything that you achieve is 99% work. And it really, it works. If you, if you really put your mind to it, you can do anything you like once you put the effort in. All along, though, she did emphasize her ambition to become a singer. And one can't help feeling that she just did the BA degree and the higher diploma in education as, a, as an insurance in case she didn't make it in the international world of singing. The Irish Chamber Choir started up and Colin Mawby was heading it. And I was very lucky to get in. That was the first year it was started. And this was just an eye-opener that they, they actually picked me to get in, because there's only four sopranos, four altos, four tenors, four basses. And I was one of the sopranos, and I was thrilled to bits. But it was during that year, with all the work we did, to see how, you know, working Colin was great. And just to do that kind of specific working and recording every Friday and then get new stuff recorded. I just decided that year, I really should try. I should try and see if it's worth doing as a full career because I enjoyed the fact of doing something like that every day, you know. So I did.
I don't mind admitting that we had many a tearful moment because any young girl possessed of the great gift of a voice that Regina had, and she has many other gratuitous blessings as well, found it hard to realize that the world of the professional singer is a tremendously disciplined one.